prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. It simply means that we have some knowledge of God right now. How many know the Lord right now? You can testify you know the God that created heaven and earth. But because our knowledge is limited, we don't know everything about God because every day we walk with him. Every day we pray to the Lord. Every day we study his word. We should learn something new about the God that we serve. We have to realize, it's, the 10th verse says, but when that which is perfect is come. Who is perfect? The perfect which is come is not brand new knowledge. The perfect is when Jesus comes. Oh, glory to God. How many know that Jesus is coming? Then that which is in part. Here we go. Out of praise. Come on, clap. So with that, I'm going to ask you to turn with me to 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter. I'm going to try to finish the second part of this message. And, and we know we had communion last Sunday, so uh, I'm going to try to get to part two of this. Part one was done just a couple weeks ago. And we want to revisit these scriptures in Jesus' name. So stand with me, 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter beginning at the first verse it says though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity I have become as a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal and though I have a gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity I am nothing and though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity it profiteth me nothing charity suffered long and is kind charity envieth not charity vaunted not itself is not puffed up doth not behave itself unseemingly seeketh not her own is not easily provoked thinketh no evil rejoiceth not in iniquity but rejoiceth in truth beareth all things believeth all things hopeth all things endureth all things charity never faileth but whether there be prophecies they shall fail. Whether they be tongues, they shall cease. Whether they be knowledge, it shall vanish away. But we know in part, and we prophesy in part, but when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, put away childish things for now we see through a glass darkly but then face to face now I know in part but then shall I know even as also I am known and now abide is faith hope charity these three but the greatest of these is charity look at your neighbor and say put love in action oh glory to God tell somebody put love in action may be seated in the presence of God. I'm going to give you a little review here that I'm going to pick up in the name of the Lord somewhere around about the fourth verse. I gave you an introduction in the name of the Lord. Obviously, Paul saw that there were some issues in the area of love. Here, charity is love. And there were some inconsistencies that he wanted to expose. He wanted to state what love was, what love isn't. And we declared that in the first part of this message that love is intentional. How many of you must love on purpose? Love is giving and receiving. Love isn't love until you give it away. Oh, glory to God. And we have to be mindful that love is one of the fruit of the Spirit, as according to Galatians 5.22. And love is the first gift or the first fruit of the spirit that is listed 
How many know if you have love, it's going to be hard to be joyful. It's going to be hard for peace. It's going to be hard for long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. But how many know we need to love, not our own way, but how many know we have to love like God? Let me submit to you, when I, opened up this, when I opened up this message, I didn't mention sexual love on purpose because that's not what we're talking about. Thank you. I mean, thank you very much. We're not, we're not talking about sexual love. We're talking about the love of God and the love of God that we must perpetuate or be effectual on other people's lives. How many know you can't love just the way you want to love? Because it's not love at all. Love, love, this type of love is unconditional love. It's the, it's the agape love. It's the love that doesn't have a reason to love. See, some people love based on condition. They love that they love for what people can do for them. Mm, this is not brotherly love. This is this is a God kind of love that can love a person that don't like you. Oh, the same writer in the book of in the book of Romans, the twelfth chapter says we we cannot love without we have to love without dissimulation, meaning that you can't pick who you love. Oh, some of you would love that I can just you know I can just love whoever I want to love. Now let me just clear the air. You know you don't have to like everything a person does, but you have to love them. Mm -hmm. How many know you really don't have God's love until it's challenged? Well, let me just get to it real quick. Matthew 5, 44. But I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Matthew 5, 46 says these words. For if ye love them which love you, what reward have ye? Do not even publicans or sinners or heathens do the same. I encourage you to use love as a weapon against your enemies. So on this communion, sun, uh, communion Sunday, help me Lord, I'm stuck on last week's experience. On this second Sunday of October, <laughs> we want to talk about the behavior of love, but what does love really do? How does love behave? So let's go to the scripture so you know that it is not my words. In the opening of the scripture, you know, Paul is basically saying, you know, you can speak in the, the tongues of men and angels, and if you don't have love, you're nothing but a sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal. You're just making noise. Don't say you love me and don't show me. Mm, you just noise. It says, although I bestow all my goods to feed the poor. See, some people think they're going to give to the poor and they're going to get into heaven. There's going to be a lot of philanthropists in hell. Mm, mm, mm. Check their tax records. They did something else with it. Y'all didn't catch that, but that's all right. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself Let's, and is not puffed up. Okay, let me get here. Love suffereth long. It's long-suffering. Love is patient and endures troubles and misfortune. You know how many know some married couples, you know, they, they, you know, they get married, say for better or for worse, for richer or for poor, but as soon as struggles come, what's love got to do with it? But love is patient. It endures trouble. It endures misfortune. Just because things go bad with, with, with your wife, your children, those that you love, in the church, don't fall out with them because trouble comes. But once again, let me go to that scripture in Romans real quick where it, it tells us that we have to love without Dissimulation. Mm. Can't choose who you love. It says, let love be without dissimulation. Romans 12, 9 and 10. Abhor that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. Be kindly affectionate one to another with brotherly love in honoring, preferring one another. As you're going to see in every aspect of love, it's unselfishness. 
Anybody in here selfish? You struggle in the area of love. It's always about you. Mm, always about you. Well, the Bible says, look, we, we can't choose who we love. We have to prefer one another. I think it's enough said about that. Love is kind. I want to give you a scripture reference for everyone. Love is kind. It Love shows acts of benevolence. People that love enjoy giving. People that love enjoy seeing other people blessed. You're so benevolent that you won't even keep your gift to yourself. You're so blessed you won't allow your anointing just to be something that, that, that belongs to you. But you are benevolent. You are a giver. Matthew 19, 21 says, Jesus said unto them, If thou wilt be perfect, go and sell that which thou hast and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. So one of the things that the disciples had to learn how to do from the inception of their call was to learn how to give. Oh, glory to God. Some people right here have more clothes in their closet than they can handle. You ain't worn them shoes in six months. You ain't worn them in two years. Find somebody in the church that's your size and give them them shoes. Oh, glory to God. I know I'm talking to people right now. So, see, some of you are saying, that's mine. I, I work for it. Oh, glory to God. Love envieth not. Love envieth not. You know, it's interesting that Paul is not talking to unsaved people. He's talking to people that have already been presented the word. The end word envieth here is to be heated or boil with anger. How many here got hot lately? I ain't talking about from the heat of the sun. You just got heated. Got upset. Just call it what it is. Lost it. Love envieth not. Love doesn't covet. Love is not jealous. Sometimes people get blessed in the church and you get upset. What you jealous for? It's a revelation that God is still blessing. It's a revelation that God is still able. And what you're envying for, you don't know what, it, what they went through to get the car. You know, it's interesting, you know, you see people, you know, posting on social media the cars that God blessed them with. You notice that they never show you the payment? Lord, bless me with this house. But you don't show them the mortgage statement. Mm. Don't covet, don't be jealous. Love says, I'll rejoice with you when you get blessed. Who wants to belong to a church where only the pastor is blessed? And just because I'm the pastor don't mean I'm, more, I'm blessed more than you. Oh, glory, let's not get it twisted. We serve the same God. We pray to the same God. We worship the same God. Let me read a little scripture support for this. Titus 3, 3 through 5 says, for, for we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving divers lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. But after that, the kindness and love of God, our Savior, toward men appeared. See, you really didn't know how to love till you met Jesus. You liked people. You tolerated people. The fifth verse of the same chapter says, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of a generation and the renewing of the Holy Ghost. So dismiss envy, dismiss your own personal pleasures and learn how to love like God loves. If you're being challenged in love, See, I told you in the last installment of this message, sometimes we pray that we love like Jesus. Anybody ever pray that way? I want to love like you. There's an old song. Lord, 
I want to be more like you. Jesus, I, I want to be more like you. Well, guess what? Being more like Jesus comes with challenges. Being more like Jesus comes with resistance. How are you going to know that you love if somebody doesn't hate you? See, sometimes we take things so personal, but don't take it personal if somebody hates you. It's giving you an opportunity to be like Jesus. 2 Corinthians eleven seventeen. Well, let me go here. Love vaunteth not. That's a strange word, vaunteth. It means you don't boast about yourself. You don't brag about what you have and what others don't have. You just know somebody that brag all the time. You see them coming, you say, Lord, the first thing they're going to do is start talking about themselves. You don't boast about yourself, but you do boast about the God that gave you the blessing. If God gives you that thing that you're waiting on, let me just ask, let me just do a check here. How many are waiting on a tangible blessing from God? Tangible, you can touch it. You can live in it, you can ride in it, you can carry it, you can wear it. You're waiting on a tangible blessing from God. The question is, can you handle what, he want, what you're asking him to do? The psalmist says, commit thy way unto God and trust in him also, and he will bring it to pass. All I'm saying to you is it's, be very cautious what you ask for because you have, to tr you have to pray this way. Lord, if you bless me with it, I can handle it. Anybody here that cuts the bus to church want to drive a car? Okay, I got a hand, I got a hand, I got a hand, I got a hand. Okay, so if he bless you with the car, you're going to be late next Sunday? See, we have to realize that, that with request, it must be a change in behavior. See, God wants to know how you're going to behave. Come on, if, if, if you were making the church in your bus flow, when he gives you a car, don't be late for church. Can you handle it? Ask your neighbor, can you handle it? Love vaunted not. The word vaunted deals with excessive extolling of yourself. But when it comes to our relationship with God, I don't care how many degrees you got. If that don't impress me, it don't impress God. How many of we can't impress God? We can impress each other, but we can't impress God. So love doesn't boast. Take your neighbor, stop bragging. And anytime you feel like bragging, remember where you came from. Remember when you didn't have the degree. Remember when you didn't have the job. Remember, you got to remember when you were bagging groceries and now you're sitting behind the seat of position. We've shouted already, so I'm just going to talk to you this morning. 2 mm -mm -mm. Corinthians eleven seventeen 17 says, That which I speak, I speak it not after the Lord, but as it were foolish in the confidence of boasting. Some people are just confident in boasting want to put it in your face but love vaunteth not then Paul takes it to another level and says love is not puffed up all oh, glory to God not puffed up you got a peacock spirit you want everybody to see your new outfit And I told you a few weeks ago, I've never met a person that put something on their body that put them in right standing with God. If you can't praise God and then leave it home. They overinflate themselves. Bragging all the time. I'm 
many cars they got, how much they have in their bank account, how much is in their 401k. They got to tell you the brand of their shoes. <laughs> Who cares? Oh, glory to God. These are the behaviors that Paul exposes. Let me tell you something. The previous chapter of 1 Corinthians, the previous chapter is, is 1 Corinthians 12 that talks about the gifts of the Spirit. The gifts of the Spirit. How many know that love is more important than the gifts of the Spirit? And if you, have, if you don't have love, just forget the gifts. You know, what, what's the sense of, of the gifts? What's the sense of the fruit of the Spirit if you don't have the first one, which is love? Some of you are going to be challenged in the area of love before the end of the week. Mm. James 4, 5, and 6 says, Do ye think that the Scripture saith in vain, the spirit that dwelleth within us lusteth to envy? That's a question. But he giveth more grace, wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. He resisted the proud. The, you know, the book of Proverbs, Old Testament book of Proverbs, tells us that one thing that the Lord hates is a proud look. So God resisted the proud. It doesn't say don't be proud. How many here are proud of yourself? You should be. But not like a peacock. See, some people are so proud of what they got, they won't tell somebody else how they got there. Love does not behave itself unseemingly. <clears throat> Anybody in here come out of character lately? I'm glad you said that. I'll just say, help me, Lord. Has anybody come out of character lately? Just say it. Help us, Lord. Help us. Help us. Help us. We're in the flesh. You know, a few messages ago, I told you that this flesh, this body that we live in, will never be saved. Love does not behave itself unseemly. Simply means, unseemly, this simply means to come out of character. Stop exposing so much of yourself to the devil. Because every time you do, you have created another button for him to push. Oh, glory to God. It's, come on, can I get a few more amens in here? Just hallelujah, glory to God. You create another button for him to push. He doesn't want us to love one another. A very familiar psalm, one and one, it will help us. Psalms 1 and 1, remember that love doesn't come out of character. Psalms 1 and 1 says these words, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. If you walk in the counsel of the ungodly, you're going to come out of character. Don't sit on the devil's couch, sit on Jesus' couch. And get counsel from him. nor standeth in the way of sinners. Nor standeth in the way. Get out of the sinner's way. And the only time you get in their way is when you're praying for them. And if you've given them direction from the word of God, and they still want to do the wrong thing, you know, you, you just have to do you and I'm going to do me. Don't stand in the way of sinners. Now, if you notice that this is a person that is intentionally getting in the way. Making themselves available to people that will change your character. Nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. So simply meaning, watch where you walk. Watch where you stand. And watch where you sit. I tell you, neighbor, if, if you're going to sit with me, you got to do right. You know, you gotta, 
If you if you're gonna sit with me, you gotta encourage me. If, if you're gonna sit next to me, you gotta be a blessing to me. If, if you if you're gonna sit next to me, you gotta praise God. Go over that section of the church where they don't praise him. Oh, there's none of those in here. Okay, let me check. What's the strongest praising section in this church? All right, I'm about to put y'all on blast right now. I'm about to put y'all on blast. <laughs> if you sit next to me, you got to praise God. Now, don't be faking it now in the name of the Lord. Love seeks not her own. Love is not self-centered. You know what a self-centered person is? Their attention always got to be on them. They always the life of the party. Always got something to say. Always know the answer. Always in the middle. It seeks not her own. In other words, simply unselfish. Love gives and doesn't take. Romans 8, 7, and 8. Because the carnal man is enmity against God. It's carnality that causes someone to be self-centered. It says, for it is not a subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. All these are fleshy things. Boasting. Being self-centered. Seeking your own. Being unseemingly. Somebody say, that's the flesh. Tell them it's nothing but the flesh. Mm. Love is not easily provoked. Has anybody been provoked lately? How did you act? Love is not easily irritated or aroused. Anybody here easily irritated? Everything get on your nerves? You see, see, see some people that say, that's just me. That's just how I act. No, you struggle in the area of love if you get irritated all the time. Everything upsets you. Somebody walk past the television while you're watching the game. <laughs> You get upset easily, irritated easily. You're irritable. You're irritable with your family. You're irritable with your coworkers. They can't stand seeing you coming. Oh, here she go. I hope she had a good time in church yesterday. Our right, day is just going to be. <laughs> you snap at everybody. Anybody doing that now? You just snap at everybody. How you doing? How you doing? What you asking me for? <laughs> this is some real stuff. This is going to help us grow up. This is going to help us grow as a church. Because if love is saturated, if love is transferred to one another, we'll have a loving church. So that when people come in and have these issues, they, they either get on board or, you know, try something else. Proverbs 15 and 1. A soft answer turneth away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. That's those, you know, I could have said something moments. I wanted to put down my Holy Ghost and just get down. We said those things, but guess what? It was the Holy Ghost that kept you from saying the wrong thing. It was the Holy Ghost that made you put your fist in your pocket. Aren't you, some, of you, aren't, some of you ought to praise God for the Holy Ghost because if you didn't have it, just go back to your former life and think what you would have done, what you would have done before you grew up in God. 
And let me pause for station identification. You can be filled with the Holy Ghost and be guilty of all these infractions. Oh, glory to God. I don't have a praise in church now in the name of the Lord. This is to wake us up that we are still in the flesh. Paul was talking to the church. I see I'm going through these slow. It's 11.15. We're doing pretty good. Rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. No child of God should be glad in situations of wrongfulness, immorality, or unrighteousness. What do, what do you rejoice about? Mm -mm -mm. You see somebody in a bad situation, and instead of praying for, I knew it, I knew it. And then before you know it, you're on the phone. Is it true? Did you hear? Did you see? You mean you waiting for somebody to fail? You waiting for somebody to get hurt? You rejoicing in another child of God's hurt? Come on now. Put love in action. Tell your neighbor, put love in action. Now when you do that, let me tell you what you're acting like. You know, we, we say things like, you know, we, at least once in your life, you said it, it came out of your mouth. You said they acting like the devil, but you know they was filled with the Holy Ghost. Come on, be honest. Matthew 23 and 27 through 28 says these words. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees. That's the last category we want to be in, is to be categorized as a scribe or a Pharisee. Because they just didn't practice what they preached. They stood on the corner and prayed so people could hear them. They looked spiritual. They looked religious, but their heart was far from God. So Matthew 23, 27 and 28 says, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. That's what the Bible says. For ye are like unto whited sepulchers, which indeed appear beautiful outward. Let me just put it this way. What, 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 what Matthew was saying is that the Pharisees looked like beautiful tombstones. Beautiful outward, but are within full of dead men's bones and of all uncleanness. Even so, ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men, but within ye are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. You know who the Pharisees were. They were always trying to trap Jesus. When Jesus was doing good, they had an issue with it. When Jesus healed the sick, they had an issue with it. When he raised the dead, they had an issue with it. When he cast out the devil, they had an issue with it. <laughs> yeah, Keith, everything. 1 Corinthians 13 and 7. This is what love does, and let me try to wind this up. It beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, and endureth all things. Let me quote it from the Message Bible. It might bring some clarity. Puts up with anything. Oh, glory to God. I want you to praise God when you hear this. Trust God always. Always looks for the best. Never looks back. But keeps going to the end. That's what love does. Love keeps it going. Mm -mm -mm. Now here's the kicker. The eighth verse says, Charity never faileth. Oh, glory to God. I want to say to you that love can handle any problem. Oh, glory to God. Love can handle any problem. That's in your friendships. 
that's in your family, that's in your marriage, that's husband to wife, father to daughter, father to son, mother to son, mother to daughter in the name of the Lord. Love will prevail. Love can handle anything. The Bible says it never faileth, but the things that will fail are prophecies. Oh, glory to God. They shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. I want to say to you that love never dies in the name of the Lord. And we have to realize that there are tongues now, but at some point, tongues will cease in the name of the Lord. Understanding will reach its limit in the name of the Lord. We know a whole lot, but eventually even knowledge will will cease. The 10th verse, the 9th verse says, for we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. It simply means that we have some knowledge of God right now. How many know the Lord right now? You can testify you know the God that created heaven and earth. But because our knowledge is limited, we don't know everything about God because every day we walk with him. Every day we pray to the Lord. Every day we study his word. We should learn something new about the God that we serve. We have to realize, it's the 10th verse says, but when that which is perfect is come. Who is perfect? The perfect which is come is not brand new knowledge. The perfect is when Jesus comes. Oh, glory to God. How many know that Jesus is coming? Then that which is in part, our partial knowledge is going to go away and we're going to know everything that there is to know about Christ. Oh, glory to God. He, when he comes, our completeness arrives. Oh, glory to God. When he comes, we become like him. The Bible says, beloved, now we are the sons of God. It, it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But when he shall appear, how many know he's coming back? When, we, when he shall appear, we shall be like him and we shall see him as he is. Oh, you need to give God a praise in this place if you are expecting the coming of the Lord. I want to close like this. In the name of Jesus, if we put love in action. Oh, glory to God. We have to put the past behind. Oh, glory to God. We have to put what people have done to us and violated you and, and abused you and disappointed you and let you down and, and turn to the God that never fails. How many know that the Lord never fails? Man will fail you. People will fail you. Organizations will fail you. But I want to preach to just a few people this morning that God will not fail you. In him there is no failure. He is the epitome of perfection. And he loves us more than we love ourselves. But how many know it's time for us to start loving one another? Oh, glory to God. If you hate the person that hates you and you love the person that loves you, you have some growing up to do. How many know that it's time for us in the name of the Lord to grow up in God? We've been in the same place long enough and God is saying to every person here right now wherever you are with God right now in the area of love if you have a pacifier in your mouth take the pacifier out your mouth and grow up and declare that I'm gonna love those that hate me I'm gonna love on those that love me I'm not gonna choose who I love because it's a good day to put love in action that's why I just gave I just gave God all all the praise when I saw you in the beginning of this service to show love by praying for one another, calling on God, not on your behalf, but on somebody else's behalf. How many know that when you love the right way, uh, that God is going to bless you. Uh, well, the Bible says, uh, oh, glory to God, uh, but when that which is perfect is come, uh, how many know that Jesus is coming uh, and it's time right now to grow up? Uh, it's time to put away childness childlessness in the church uh, in the name stop acting like a child and act like a man stop acting like a child and act like a woman see if you have to say I'm a grown man there's a problem if you have to say I'm a grown woman there's a problem no act like a grown man act like a grown woman oh glory to God it's all right to say I'm grown but if you have to say you're grown to 
prove it, then you really don't believe that you're grown. How many grown folk do we have in here? Oh, glory to God. You've been through some stuff. You've been through the storm. You've been through the rain. But you can testify that love is what brought me out. Oh, glory to God. And when we have love, we see the love of Jesus. How many are grateful for the love of Jesus? Just pause and put your hands together and say, he loved me in spite of me. Oh, glory to God. When we feel like hating, think about how bad we used to be. I'm talking about the things that don't people don't know about you. Oh, glory to God. Tell your neighbor, if you just knew my story, if you just knew in the name of the Lord what I went through to get here, oh, glory to God. Some of you were hateful, but now you love. Oh, glory to God. You didn't love nobody here, and you couldn't understand when you got the Holy Ghost. Why do I love them? I just don't understand. It's the love of God on the inside that shows going up on the outside because the Bible says if any man be in Christ uh, he's a new creature uh, all things have passed away yeah. oh glory see some of you are still living in your past uh, oh glory to God uh, hallelujah when I was a, when I was a little guy I was told that I used to carry a cold blanket uh, in the name of Jesus uh, oh glory to God I was like Linus on the peanuts uh, in the name of the Lord but I put away my cold blanket in the name of the Lord and decided when God came into my life I was just like him running up on the pulpit in the name of the Lord putting putting lifesavers in Nanny's mouth while she was trying to speak in tongues in the name of the Lord but I thank God today that I am a man of God well somebody just celebrate who you are in God. Oh, glory to God. Uh, you you want to thank God that you're grown. Uh, you want to thank God that, that what should have took you out, love preserves you. Uh, in the name of the Lord, what should have made you give in, uh, love made it all right for you. Uh, I think I'll get rid of hate and I'll declare that I love uh, in the name of the Lord. Uh, how many would rather love than hate? It takes too much energy uh, to be upset with somebody. Uh, it takes too much energy to hate uh, but when the love of God uh, is in your life, uh, the Bible says, when I was a child, uh, oh, glory to God, tell somebody, that was my past. Oh, glory to God, I'm so glad it says, I am a, not, I am a child, but it says, when I was a child, uh, oh, glory to God, that's what you used to be. Oh, glory to God, uh, tell somebody, it's time to grow up. Y'all ain't saying it. Oh, come on. Tell, tell your neighbor, it's time to grow up in the name of the Lord. Oh, glory to God. See, when you grow up, you're not self-centered in the name of See, when you grow up, it's not about you. Oh, glory to God. When you grow up, it's time to be a blessing to somebody else. Well, the Bible says, when I was a child, I spake as a child. It's a shame when you're a grown man and a grown woman and you can't articulate like you are grown in the name you, you you articulate like a two-year-old oh glory to God still saying goo goo gaga in the spirit and the Lord said it's too much Bible you need to start speaking what I say in the name of Jesus even a child repeats what mom and daddy say oh glory to God you might say why is Sally going to school cussing oh glory to God why is Roy going to school cussing the teacher out because they heard you cussing oh you need to praise God in here but in when you grow up in God you say what God says you make the Deposits in the lives of people that need an answer from the Lord oh glory to God how many know you can tell a person is grown by the way they talk the question is what are you saying as I wind down in the name of Jesus when I was a child I speak as a child. Paul was saying to the Corinthian church, Corinthians, you're acting like children. Corinthians, you're acting like babies. I didn't preach no Sesame Street gospel to you. Oh, glory to God. I didn't preach no romper room gospel to you. It's time to stop playing jacks, tic-tac-toe. Hopscotch. 
and some of y'all real grown children video games. Oh, I ain't knocking folk to play video games. I'm just saying. It's time to grow up. What's going to help us grow up is love. If you love, you'll have more peace at night. See, the person you hate, you think about them probably at least once a day. But when you, when you love everybody, you'll sleep at night. When you don't love, they're controlling you. Don't let nobody control you. Kill them with love. Love is your weapon of choice. But you got to put it in action. I spake as a child. I understood as a child. Some of us should have a desire before the conclusion of this year to go from milk to meat. The Bible says desire the sincere milk of the word. But how I many at some point you have to switch to solid food? You know how the mothers do when the children are getting ready to eat solid food. They chew it first and then put it in the baby's mouth. Sounds disgusting, doesn't it? But we have to intentionally want to eat solid food. That's why I'm so grateful that you know you allow me to talk to you on Sunday morning because these messages are going to help us to grow up as children of God. It's going to help us to be better in what God has called us to do. It's going to help us to make intentional impact even in 2017. Tell your neighbor, this year ain't over. It's not over yet. God is not through blessing you with 2016 blessings. But let me tell you something, you better get up in a position in 2016 so you can handle what's coming in 2017. But when I became a man, but when you became a man, when you became a woman, you had to make a decision. And that decision was to put away childish things. Put away the blocks. Put away the childish games. Paul's talking to the Corinthians and saying, grow up and love somebody. You might say, where do I want to start with spiritual maturity? See, some of us, we want to cast out devils, but we don't love. We want to lay hands on the sick, but we don't love. We want to intercede, but we don't love. We want to go into the world and preach the gospel, but we don't love. And God says you can preach, you can speak in tongues, you can give your body to be burned, you can give all of your goods to the poor. But if you don't love, you are nothing. Oh, glory to God. And if there's anybody in here that declares that you are something, I want you to begin to give God a praise and declare before the devil in the name of the Lord and his cohorts. I know you want me to hate. I know you want me to call my brother and sister out of their name. But I declare on this Sunday morning that love is about to overtake this church in the name of Jesus. And the love that you have on the inside is going to be felt by everyone that you're around. I come to tell you it's time to put love in action and deactivate the power of Satan. But God is love. And if God is love and love is on the inside, we need to let it show up on the outside. You need to give God a praise right now and 
like saying to yourself, I will put love in action, not just on Sunday morning, but Sunday through Saturday. God doesn't leave my body when I leave the church, but God is on the inside, and I believe if we love, he'll give us some joy. He'll give us peace. He'll give us long-suffering. He'll give us gentleness. He'll give us meekness. He'll give us faith. He'll give us temperance. Give God a praise for unconditional love. What does it look like? Oh, glory to God. What does love look like? Well, let's go back to communion Sunday. They hung him high. They stretched him wide. He bowed his head. For me, he died. He died for those that didn't love him. He died for those that wanted to destroy him. So the next time somebody tries to show hate towards you, just let them know I love you anyhow. Oh, glory to God. Does anybody got unconditional love? Oh, glory to God. There's no strings attached. I can't help but love you because Christ is on the inside. He's going to show up on the outside. Come on, give God a praise in the sanctuary. If you know God loves you, just lift your hands and worship him and say, Lord, because you love me, I love you and I love everybody that's around me. Put love in action. It's not puffed up. It's not boastful. But love says to your brother and sister, I prefer you over myself. That means before I get blessed, I want you to get your blessing. Oh, glory to God. Can you look at your neighbor and say, I want you to be blessed. I don't know what you're waiting on, but I want you to be blessed. I want you to be healed. I want you to be delivered. I want you to be set free. In the name of Jesus, can we let love flow in the sanctuary? Can we open up our mouths and give God a praise that says, Lord, I want to love a little bit more. Challenges will come. Obstacles will come. Burdens will come. But God's not going anywhere. He's moving on the inside. He's showing up on the outside. Oh, glory to God. Will this church, as we close this service, in the name of Jesus, oh, glory to God, I feel that at this moment that we should start praying. In the name of Jesus, we started this service and the glory of God touched down at 943 Jefferson Avenue. But I want you right now to begin to pray for somebody out of love. Stand to your feet. Put your hand in somebody's hand and begin to intercede for them like you love them. You might not know their name. You might not know what they're going through, but come on, pray for that person, pray for their healing, pray for their strength, pray for their family, pray for their loved one, pray for their success, such and agree that the Lord will be in the midst, come on pray church, and pray now, pray without ceasing, the fervent and the effectual prayer of a righteous man, availeth much to pray for you. I've got to love you, to intercede for you. I've got to love you. Call your neighbor's name and say, neighbor, you will be blessed. I'm not mad at you. I'm not upset with you, but I'm praying for your health. I'm praying for spiritual fervor. I'm praying that the door will be open. Put love in action. Open up your mouth. Let's pray together in the name of Jesus. Let love flow. Let love flow. Let love flow. Because of your prayer, somebody's getting an answer. Because of your prayer, the power of the enemy is being broken. The snare of the enemy is being broken by love unconditional and full of glory come on pray until they get an answer pray in the seed in the name of Jesus the devil 
he doesn't want us to love but come on in the name of Jesus pray for that person till they feel the love of the Lord come on come on come on come on come on Come on, we're getting ready to go home. But come on, love is about to flow. Love is about to grow. Love is about to show. Love is about to overtake your neighbor's life. Come on, pray until you feel the love of the Lord. There's love in that hand. There's power in that hand. Put love in action. Put love in action. Love with purpose. Love intentionally. Love put away the childish things. Give God the glory. Hallelujah. You're making a devil man on the second Sunday of October. The love of God is being released in this holy temple. I can see some of you. The burden is being lifted off of you. The power of love. The love of Jesus. Love is not what love says. Love is what love does. That person's hands you're holding. They're getting an answer right now. They're getting their healing right now. Lift up that hand and say, I love God. I love you. And love is about to overtake you. In the name of Jesus. Come on. Let the enemy hear your prayer. Touch somebody with the hand of love. In the name of Jesus. Come on. God's using you to pray. God's using you to intercede. God is using you. See, hate is being dismissed right now. There's no hate in any section. The love of God is flowing now. That's right. Open up your mouth and call on Jesus. We're about to go home. But love is the enemy of hate. Love is the opponent of hate. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Everybody should be touching someone with the hand of love, it might make you feel. Here we go, out of praise.